before I begin, I just want to, um, to say a big thank you to all participants, creators, players, singers, organizers, helpers. Um, we've made this really a beautiful community occasion. Thank you so much, everybody. Let's give it up for all the people who came. All of us here today are to some extent survivors of the COVID pandemic. Though many of you have suffered loss or illness or mental health issues of varying severity. We have all been through some hard times and we have needed one another. One of my favorite activities during the pandemic was to walk around our campus during its renovation and recreation when it was a building site, watching the old strip bare for conservation and the new slowly rising was somehow therapeutic. Quite often in my perambulations, I was accompanied by my young granddaughter, Hadley, who was just over two at the time. Hadley had a name for all the trucks and cranes and the workers played along with her with waves and friendly comments. Hadley assumed the role of site supervisor <laughs> and she enjoyed the attention. On Easter Sunday in April, she and I went for another walk along a beach in Cape Cod. We were the only two people on the beach. The beach ran along a fast moving tidal inlet and as the tide went out, it left little sand islands separated by water channels of varying depths. Hadley dressed in boots and an oversized coat, hair flowing in the wind, loved playing a game of island hopping, depending on me to rule when the water was too deep to mess with. She took my hand as she moved from sand island to sand island. And when she jumped along an uneven rocky pier, reaching out to the sea, she reached from my hand once again. The greater the sense of danger, the tighter she took my hand. On the way back home, she started to collect little golden shells for her mother. I was allowed to help in her curation of shells, but my offerings were subject to ruthless quality control. <laughs> As my shells were tossed aside for being too white, flawed, or simply because she had not picked them herself. <laughs> In quality control mode, Hadley is not a soft touch. <laughs> Throughout this little expedition, I knew that Hadley depended on me and trusted on me to assess danger levels. The more adventurous she became, the more she needed me. She trusted me, and her trust freed her to take more risks. During our beach walk, I was also too, too aware of how much this beach had changed over the last decade. And I could not help thinking about what this beach would look like in 20 or 30 years time. Would it even be there? Would the row of Cape houses framing the beach survive the rising sea levels? Would Hadley ever walk this beach with her own children or her own grandchildren? As these questions crowded in, I, I began to think more about Hadley's childlike trust in her grandfather. What if I was only trustworthy in the playful games of island hopping, but not really trustworthy in helping to save the beach itself? What if she looks back on her grandfather, not as a caring companion, but as a careless collaborator in the destruction of her favorite place? I thought of this little episode when I recently attended an event during Climate Justice Week at Harvard Divinity School, hosted by Terry Tempest Williams, our writer in re residence, and the climate activist, Rebecca Solnit. About 40 students gathered around the outside fireplace just over there to talk about climate change. And at the end of the evening, the group agreed together that love and hope 
were better motivators for change than anger and pessimism. And then we were all asked, what did we love? I said I loved my granddaughter, but was troubled by what my generation was doing to love her. The next day I read a book on my bedside table by Jenny O'Dell entitled Saving Time, Discovering a Life Beyond the Clock. The main message of the book is that we've created a world centered on work, the office clock, or the profit motive. She advocates for different ways to experience time, inspired by pre-industrial cultures, ecological cues, and geological timescales that can bring within reach a more humane, responsive way of living. As planet-bound animals, we live inside shortening and lengthening days, alongside gardens growing, birds migrating, cliffs eroding, the stretchy quality of waiting and desire, the way the present may suddenly feel marbled with childhood memory, the slow but sure procession of a pregnancy, the time it takes to heal from injuries. We're urged to become stewards of these different, more natural rhythms of life in which time is not reducible to standardized units and instead forms the very medium of possibility. What got my attention in this book is the way in which our very existence in space and time has become dominated by a culturally constructed chronos. We clock in and clock out of our lives like fa factory workers, punching in and out of industrial time machines, built to measure every single minute for purposes of surveillance and remuneration. Odell writes, I believe that a real meditation on the nature of time, unbound from its everyday capitalist incarnation, shows that neither our lives nor the life of the planet is a foregone conclusion. In that sense, the idea that we could save time by recovering its fundamentally irreducible and inventive nature could also mean that time would save us. So what's the point of all this? Each of you graduating students are in an interstitial moment between one way of measuring time by semesters, credits, term papers, deadlines, and another measurement of time, the time of your own choosing, how will I make my life meaningful and choreograph my own days. You know that your own time at HDS was not just measured by the academic clock. You had peer group and mentoring relationships. You had time to experiment and think and discover things about yourself. You became critics and activists and passionate advocates for creation care and human flourishing. You had your hopes and aspirations refined by new, new knowledge and hard experience. You also found open time to simply contemplate, to dream and catch up with yourself and identify your true feelings. So what comes next? I'm sorry to say that the next phase of your li lives may not be easy. My generation has left you with many troubling challenges. You may be thinking of people like me, the way I once thought of the generation that bequeathed the Irish troubles to me and my fellow graduating students half a century ago in Belfast. Why didn't they see it coming, I thought. What could they, why could they not see that societies built around exclusive cultural identities, unequal access to economic resources, and partisan political domination could not survive peacefully for very long? Why were they so resistant to change when the grim consequences of sectarian paralysis and outright violence were so clearly visible? Over time, I came to see that opinions based on accusation and blame were not really change agents. In truth, we were all complicit in a problem that was centuries in the making. The real question was, 
Could we reckon with past evils we had not created and present consequences we could not avoid in hopes for a better future we could still choose? For us, whether we are reckoning with the legacy of slavery and racism at Harvard and beyond, or with impending climate and environmental disasters, this is a moment for saving time and saving ourselves and the planet that we relentlessly abuse. In conclusion, I want to say honestly, I have more confidence in this wonderful graduating class than any other class at Harvard. It has been an extraordinary privilege getting to know many of you, and I have this opportunity to speak to all of you this afternoon. Someday when you get the chance to hold the hand of a dear child you care about, or one of your own beloved children or grandchildren, make sure you can look them in the eye and know that they can trust you to keep them safe in both small things and big things. Spending your time in soulful stewardship of this beautiful broken world and offering your hand changes everything. There's no better use of your time. It will save you.